Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the 2020 NatSci Annual Faculty Meeting and Award Ceremony. And the music that you just heard is Gypsy Jazz. And the song was Minor Swing, which is a, a classic tune by uh, Django Reinhardt. Um, as is tradition, we start off the meeting with an image that captures something really good that happened during the last year. And this is something really good that's been going on for quite a long time, and that's the uh, graduate program in uh, ecology, evolution, and behavior. And this image shows some of the really exciting things that have happened among that group over the past year. Um, this year also, uh, a new leader took over that program, uh, Elise Sipkin, as a new director. And it's timely to thank Kay Holkamp, who has really raised the profile of that program to a very high level. So I'd like to say thank you to her. Uh, before we get into the main part of the program, we've got to do some housekeeping. The first piece of housekeeping is to approve the agenda for today's meeting, and here it is. And I guess we need an approval process, so um, uh, I guess that's up to you, Kari. Uh, we, need a, we need a person to move that we approve. I move to approve the agenda. Do we have a second? I guess I that'll second. have to... <laughs> You second. <laughs> we have to have some way of seeing hands. There's some, um, uh, Angela Wilson in the chat says she seconds. Okay, that's very good. Nine participants, eight participants have raised hands, six, seven, it's decreasing. <laughs> now it's going up, okay, very good. Once we get to 50, we'll be good, 51 or so. We're up to 41, keep raising hands, 52, we've, we've done, thank you very much. So the uh, agenda for today's meeting is approved. Uh, the next item uh, we have to um, approve is the minutes from last year's meeting, and here they are. Um, it looks pretty much like this year's meeting, and the hands are going up before we before we move, but that's good. We, we can. So I move to approve. Very good. Victory to seconds. Great. We're up to 34. We now have 108 participants, so we need to get to 60. There we are. Thank you, everybody. Consider that now approved. So. Thank you. Um, so the next item for us is to go through, uh, give you a bit of an update about the college. <clears throat> and the first item is the uh, progress in advancement. And here are the numbers for the 1920 year. You can see that uh, about 5.8 million was raised, which is lower than previous years, but still very good given the fact we got hit with COVID. And uh, the current year is also going pretty well, and that's due to the great work of the endowment team. And, and Corey, thank you very much for your work there. And that uh, progress has been made by adapting to a virtual workplace. And many of you have participated in the virtual events. They've turned out to be very helpful for us to engage with our alumni. And some new contacts have been made uh, and we have, we're, we're still thinking, and Kari is thinking, and her team are thinking about what other things we can do, and how what we have learned during COVID can be taken into um, the real world once we get back to normal operations. And I think there's lots of hybrid things we can do that will be very successful. Our funding priorities, um, are, as usual, endowed faculty positions, um, student scholarships, and emergency relief. We're adding DEI, that's always been there, but now it's a particular focus. Um, and we're also thinking a lot about center level uh, research themes. We've been talking about these for a while, but now we're, we're, we're honing in on a few directions. And this will play into um, a new university campaign that we anticipate will start in the next few years. Uh, so here's a little bit more detail about engagement. We have 63,000 or so alumni and trying to engage them with them virtually has turned out to, to be a little bit easier than we expected. 
Um, so there's a variety of things we're looking at. NetSide Connect is, a, is a, a piece of software where students and alumni can connect directly. And Sarah Ford has done a great job working with Brian Telfer, as well as Kari and her team to get that initiated. And we have uh, quite a few uh, alumni and students engaged in that now. The virtual events and presentations I just mentioned, they, they're going very well, even though it's hard to get people to engage even more online. We still get good uh, turnout to that. The one that happened this week around hockey statistics or analytics was very interesting and had one of the previous uh, hockey players from uh, Michigan State there. And, and he, was, he was a very engaging person and is keen to engage with us further. Um, so the typical alumni events that we have and, and we really enjoy, scholarship event, the alumni awards, classes without quizzes, we're going to try to do them all in this virtual world. Here are the numbers, NATSI numbers, um, as well as uh, Michigan State University numbers. Uh, we have around 49,700 students at Michigan State in the fall, of which 38,000, about 500 are undergrads. In NATSI, we have around 5,600 undergrad majors, and there are 1,441 in Lyman Briggs. Um, incoming freshmen, 1,185. We've lost a few of those due to COVID, but not as many as we had feared, about 4%. Um, and we have 514 uh, Lyman Briggs freshmen, and almost all of those students do their upper level courses in NATSI. Uh, in terms of graduate students, we have 866 PhD students and 88 master's students, and that is by far the largest number of PhD students in any college at our university. Here are the budget numbers. Uh, our general fund allocation in the last fiscal year was $82 million, which is 5.7% of the total general fund at the university. Uh, the number of uh, faculty FTE in the college is 288 out of 19. 1,968, which is 14.6% of the university total. The tuition dollars generated, this is um, uh, instructor tuition dollars, uh, by NATSI faculty and staff is 209 million, which is just over 20% of the total university uh, amount. And that's a really important number for us. And we have to think of ways in which we can convince the university that the ratio of 20% to 5.7% is too uh, large. We need to somehow more, uh, need more support for our teaching mission. In addition to this very strong tuition dollar um, generated number, uh, we are also the largest generator of indirect cost recovery at the university. And you can see that number there, 21.6% of the IDC coming into Michigan State is generated in our college. Um, federal grant income, 61 million, 14.4%, which seems to be a bit off compared to the 21% of IDC. What it means is the grants coming into NATSI have more uh, IDC than many of the grants going to other places on campus. Um, and that's because quite a few of the grants in other places don't have full IDC. Our total endowment at the moment is 105 million, and that's been going up very steadily over the last uh, few years. Um, and so we're interested in pushing that forward too. So the general message here is, and we wanna keep uh, making this clear to, to, to the upper administration, from a return of, on investment perspective, NATSI is a top performer uh, and should be, um, should be rewarded for that. Um, our recurring budget this year uh, is down 2.1%. In comparison, the, uh, in the last fiscal year, it was up 3%. And that's a pretty significant drop. <clears throat> and it comes from two sources. We had that 3% uh, cut to all of our budgets and we didn't get salary raises. And salary raises are around 2%. So the total reduction in our budget uh, is around 5%. We got hit with um, this 3% reduction, 2.2 million, the 1.1% program efficiency reduction. And um, uh, <clears throat> we had these salary decreases. Um, the university allocation to us really related to PERF and other things is 1.2 million. The um, non-recurring budget uh, that we received is up 3.1%. In, compar in comparison, last year it was about 6%. So 
So that's also significantly down. And that's a reflection of the climate we're in. The news from the upper administration uh, is that the next couple of years don't look much better. So it's likely that we will, will be facing similar kind of reductions, uh, though the messaging is we need to figure out how to increase revenue, um, which may offset proposed reductions in, uh, in our budget. And, and there's ways we can talk about trying to do that. Um, the F&A generated in the college is uh, plotted here. And you can see over the last few years, it's gone up significantly. From uh, 2000 to now, it's up about a, just over a factor of two, which is a solid increase. So now we move on to leadership changes in the college. And the first uh, is uh, Elise Zipkin, we mentioned her before. She gave us that picture just that was at the start of the talk. Uh, Elisa stepped in to take over from Kay Holkamp, who's been in that position for a long time. And she is a mover and a shaker. And uh, when she uh, decided she wanted to take on this role, she uh, wanted to go around and try to um, engage everybody on campus in fundraising for EEB. Uh, frankly, I thought she was being very hopeful given the climate, and she proved me completely wrong. She, um, she, she was able to be successful at getting funding from six or seven different units. So EEB is in a pretty good position now for the next couple of years, and uh, we look forward to her making a lot of progress with the support she has been able to uh, garner. Uh, the second person I'd like to thank for joining the leadership team in the college is Vince Melfi. And Vince was going, he did step down from the prime, prime program directorship, uh, and he'd only been in the statistics department for a year or so before um, he was convinced to take on the, the interim chair role in the Department of Statistics and Probability. And he's doing a great job. And I'd like to thank him for taking on that role. Uh, a second interim chair in the college at the moment is Jeffrey Frey Mueller. Uh, he will take over as interim chair of Earth and Environmental Sciences um, on the uh, 1st of January. And uh, I'd really like to thank Dave um, Hindman for doing a fantastic job of bringing Earth and Environmental Sciences back from the brink of elimination to being a very strong participant in the, in the success of the college and being one of the biggest uh, resource generators in the college. So it's been a remarkable transformation. We welcome Jeffrey aboard and, and look forward to further progress. <clears throat> um, and the fourth leadership change to mention is Tim Warren. He will start as the new chair of the Department of Chemistry the 1st of June, um, 2021. And he'll be taking over from Rob Maleczka. And thanks to Rob for doing a lot of great things in the Department of Chemistry. And we're looking forward to Tim um, coming in and, and making major changes and pushing the department forward and garnering uh, new resources from the central administration. I should have said a minute ago when I talked about Vince, thank you to Frederick for doing a great job of restoring the statistics department to fiscal stability and really pushing it in very positive directions. <clears throat> Uh, leadership changes and staff changes in the Dean's office are, are here. So uh, Eric Haig took over earlier this year and um, he, he, it doesn't seem like he's only been in his position for six or seven months, but he has and he, he's making a mark and he's really doing a great job. Uh, Lynn Marie Posey uh, also stepped into the breach. She got hit with everything when she landed and, and she's done a great job of juggling all that and making a seamless um, transition into this role. Dorali Rabolo, she's our new advisor in human biology and she's doing a terrific job taking on that role. Uh, other people that have come into the college over the last year, um, Adele Simmons is replacing a, a, a research administrator in our pre-award group and we're looking forward to having her fully engaged in what is a very heavy load of pre-award activities <clears throat> run by Judy, Judy Brown. Um, we had Shelby Gom uh, Gombosi leave and uh, take on a role in, um, in Olin Health Center. And it's great to welcome Estrella Starn as the new administrative assistant for graduate and undergraduate studies. And uh, finally, only because her name starts with a W, uh, is Angela Wilson, who is the Associate Dean for Strategic Initiatives and she is really making an impact, impact uh, at the college level, as well as being uh, 
the new president-elect for the American Chemical Society. And one of the areas that we're talking a lot about at the moment is the new honorifics program that the provost is pushing hard. And uh, she's taking a leadership role in figuring out how we can get more prestigious national awards to our faculty. And I think that's a really great thing to do. And we're looking forward to seeing progress in that area. Uh, so next, uh, we go through all of the wonderful new faculty members that have joined us over the past year um, in the biochemistry and molecular bi biology department. Kelly Kim has joined us and uh, she really strengthens the cryo-EM effort. Uh, ben Orlando is another assistant professor also in biochemistry and molecular biology, which uh, also, who also uses the cryo-EM for some of his work. And we really want to thank Kristen Parent for leading the searches that identified these great young faculty. And we're looking forward to, to great science coming out of their efforts and the fact that we now have a terrific new cryo EM on campus. Um, in chemistry, we've had a GII hire, Elad Harrell. Uh, he came from Northwestern. He works in the area of ultrafast science. Um, and he's uh, really a technically skilled scientist. He, he, he's only been here about six months and his lab's being renovated right now. Um, Tom O'Halloran was a, a very major chemistry figure that has moved or will move to um, Michigan State soon. And he is the spouse of our provost. Um, and he works uh, in, in a general field around metals, particularly their role in biological processes and in technologies to identify them within cells at the single cell level. Um, so we're very excited to have him here and, and we look forward to his leadership once he gets on campus. Um, in integrated bi biology, we have a new faculty member, Elizabeth Heath Heckman, and uh, she uh, is, is the spouse of, <clears throat> of one of the, Nathan Whitehorn, who's a new hire in uh, the physics and astronomy department. Um, she works in host micro, uh, microbe interactions, a really interesting problem with squid. Um, and she has a lot of overlap with many of the other people on campus who do host microbe interactions. That, that's a really exciting development for integrative studies. Um, we had two hires in mathematics, Matthew Stoffregen. Um, and uh, he uh, works in low dimensional topology and topology is an area of great strength and traditionally has been an area of great strength at Michigan State. So we're looking forward to continuing to build in that area. Um, it's an area where we can imagine pushing the math department toward uh, high rankings. And so in the future, we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can continue to expand in that area. Joseph Waldron is an assistant professor in the classification of algebraic varieties, and, and it's great to have him join us. In microbiology and molecular genetics, um, we have two new hires, Sarah Thebus, who's an assistant professor, and she works on plant microbiomes. Um, the general theme of microbiomes is, is expanding in, in, in a variety of areas, and there's a lot of different overlapping um, new faculty that, that can work in that area. One of them is Nina Whale, who's a new assistant professor, um, in, also in MMG. And she works on parasite ecology, evolution, and disease, and she has a partial in, in appointment in iBio. Physics astronomy had four new hires this year, and all of these were um, put in place when I was chair of physics, so uh, they were previous commitments. Um, and uh, we have Rachel Henderson, who works in the area of physics education uh, research, Claudio Coppa, who's part of the initiative to to take a leadership role in the Ice Cube collaboration at the South Pole. Um, Joseph Rodriguez, and he was hired because um, Ed Brown, who's one of the astronomers and a a a theorists in the astrophysics group, has been helping out CMSE um, in, in a leadership role there. And so he is not uh, putting as much time into astronomy and astrophysics as he used to. And then I mentioned Nathan Whitehorn just a moment ago. And he is uh, uh, an outstanding young uh, particle experimentalist. And he, uh, he does experimental work uh, related to Ice Cube, but also to the microwave background experiment at the South Pole. <clears throat> In the plant research lab, uh, we have hired Josh Vermas. And he's a computational scientist in areas related to plant research. We're really looking forward to him 
joining plant biology and, and making connections to CMSE. In statistics and probability, we've hired Jennifer Green. Um, she studies statistics education and builds a new bridge between uh, NatSci and the program in math education prime. So they're the new faculty uh, that we brought on this uh, over the past year. And uh, there's a lot of exciting things that uh, we expect um, to come out of that over the next uh, few years. One of, the, uh, one of the vital things for the college over the last, um, since 2014, how many years is that? So that's six years, um, uh, is the GII program. And to this date, GII has led to 92 hires across campus. 30 were senior and 62 junior. Uh, there were four hires related to GII in, uh, in that side <clears throat> in fiscal year 2020, and that were Kelly Kim, Elad Harrell, Ben Orlando, and Nathan Whitehorn. Um, each one of those is a different deal, so it, it, it's, uh, it's not a uniform uh, full coverage by GII. In each case, we have to negotiate. Um, nevertheless, the number of hires to NatSci from GII uh, in the six years it's been around has been 35, six senior and 29 junior, which is 38% of the total MSU hires. And you can see without that number, our faculty total would be going down very significantly, um, as is consistent with the fact that our budget is, is getting hit uh, every year with a 1% cut or more, as is happening now. <clears throat> So it's a, it's a tough world and it'll be a tough world, even more tough if we don't have something like GII going forward. Uh, so with that, um, um, I'm going to go on and talk about faculty honors. I should have said at the beginning that uh, if you have questions or would like any follow-up, please put them in the chat or the Q&A and we can answer them at the end of this part of, the, of, the, of today's activities. So um, career awards have been a, a, a point of pride for NatSci over the last couple of years. We've uh, had seven or eight uh, over the last couple of years. And, and two years ago, we had seven women that got career awards. This year, we have four. And all four of them uh, are in CMSE as their faculty go through the process of maturing and getting their programs going. And here are the four uh, CMSE NSF Early Career Award winners for this year. Min Chen, uh, Tony Gao, Jose Perea, and Jian Rong Wang. And congratulations to them. They're really important awards for us, both in terms of their monetary value and in terms of uh, stature, as they appear in many of the rankings as a prestigious award. Um, one other award I haven't seen before at uh, Michigan State is a uh, a very significant five-year award, um, which is uh, a, a, an early stage investigator award from the NIH. And that was won by Gideon Bradberg, who's in uh, integrated biology. So congratulations to him. That's, that's a, a, a good blazing a trail there. We'd like to see a lot more of those. <clears throat> there are two people amongst our cohort that are in very high level positions in their associations. And, um, the first is Victor Rita, uh, who is currently the president of the American Society for Microbiology, which is a very large um, society in, in the US. And uh, he, he seems to be carrying that load effortlessly. He seems to still be around and doing a lot of things in his lab and in the college. So congratulations and well done, uh, Vic. The most recent announcement has been uh, that the president-elect of the American Chemical Society is Angela Wilson, and uh, the American Chemical Society has over 150,000 members and is one of the largest scientific societies in the world. So it's amazing that Angela is the uh, president-elect. She's the first um, MSU faculty person or person of any type that has been uh, president-elect or president of the American Chemical Society. And she's uh, the first theoretical chemist that has been president-elect and that's really blazing a trail, congratulations, Angela. Um, in terms of major awards, there's a, an award I'd never heard of <clears throat> uh, that we learned that Joseph Krejcik uh, won recently. And I called up and congratulated Joe and, and he said he'd never heard of the award either. Uh, <laughs> so he, he, 
he, he then realized that there was actually money involved in this award. It was like $35,000. So I went to look at this award uh, online and it turned out that, that a few years ago, Barbara Bush won it. Um, so it's, it, it's an award that not only rewards scientists, but people that impact um, education across the country. And Joe does that by preparing new curricula for science uh, in, in middle schools. And so it's a very impressive award. Um, Huawei Win Lin um, won the Cottrell Award, and that is not a common award to win um, in the sciences. So that's a that's a high pro, a high profile award. Rhonda Montgomery keeps on winning things, and and the the latest is a, a Cell Press Crosstalk: 100 Inspiring Black Scientists in America. Uh, uh, Real, uh, uh, yeah, representation. Uh, the, the, the next one to mention is really a, a fantastic thing for the college, and that is every time we get a National Academy of Sciences member join us, it's, it's really a landmark. And, and Greg Howe is the latest member of our faculty to become a, a member of the NAS. Um, and so congratulations, Greg, and, and, and we really are very proud of you. Uh, next, there is a list here of people who are um, joining their um, science societies um, and the American Association for the Advancement of Science, AAAS. We have four new members, Jeffrey Frey, Frey Mueller, Eric Haig, Jufei Huang, and Cheryl Kerfeld. And these uh, AAAS fellowships are also considered by the National Research Council as prestigious awards. And so when you get your academic analytics lists, <clears throat> they factor in to the quality of your department. So the more of these you have in your department, yeah, the better off you are. And it's also true that if you get more NSF career awards at Sloan fellowships, they also factor in. Uh, member of the American Mathematical Society, um, Jeff Schenker, um, and then the American Society for Plant Biologists. And this is actually an award, Excellence in Education Award for Tammy Long. <clears throat> Congratulations to all of you. Uh, Professional Society Awards, uh, Kay Holkamp won the Animal Behavior Society Distinguished Animal Behavior Award. The Ecological Society of America Early Career Fellow went to Ashley Shade. The Royal Society of Chemistry Education Award went to Melanie Cooper. The Society for Conservation Biology Early Career Conservationist Award went to Mariah Meek. And the Society for Freshwater Science Fellow went to Jan Stevenson, and that they're uh, very high level awards. Congratulations to them all. Uh, we have uh, quite a few um, endowed faculty in the college, although we do need more. Um, and these are those that have not been fully recognized yet. Um, we need uh, to have celebrations of them and have them stand up and talk about what they do. So uh, we're, we're mentioning them here, and at some point when we can, we'll have, we'll have an in-person um, event for them. So Danny Caballero, he's actually been the Lappin Phillips Professor of Science Education for a couple of years. Uh, more recently, Sean Crosson uh, joined us and uh, he studies um, microbiology pathogenesis in large animals or uh, large animals is one of his interest areas. Um, and he is the Rudolf Hugh Endowed Chair in Microbial Pathogenesis. And then Angela Wilson, who's been here for a while or at least on the faculty for a while, just came back from NSF and she has not been recognized yet. So it's good to recognize her here. We have two new uh, foundation professors, Piotr Pichuk and Guo Wei Wei. And both of these gentlemen were getting recruited elsewhere. And the fact we were able to find uh, MSU foundation professors for them was key in retaining them. And, and foundation professorships are very helpful for that purpose. Both are very high level theorists Piotr working on quantum chemistry and Guo Wei working on drug discovery. Um, now we're getting to the awards. These are the university awards. Um, Jufei Huang from the chemistry department won the Beale Outstanding Faculty Award and Rich Lenski from microbiology and molecular genetics uh, also won the Beale Outstanding Faculty Award. Congratulations, gentlemen. <clears throat> the MSU uh, Teacher Scholar Award was won by Michaela Terravest. Um, from the biochemistry and molecular biology uh, department, and she is a true superstar. We want to make sure we uh, keep recognizing her. <clears throat> um, with that, uh, we, we now look quickly at a few grants. Um, these are, this is not comprehensive. These are a few recent grants uh, selected by the criteria that 
Uh, a member of the NatSci faculty is the PI, and that the grant total is over a million dollars, and the grant was awarded in uh, 2020. Um, so here are some. Uh, a, a very recent award is one that Bruno Basso uh, received, and it, it's to do with his precision agriculture efforts and trying to get uh, his methods for reducing fertilizer use out to farmers. <clears throat> and it's a $2.6 million uh, award from the USDA. Um, Ingo Brash, I think we mentioned just, uh, although this is, this is Ingo Brash, yeah, he, he, um, he does work in fish and it's a $1.6 million award from the NSF EDGE program. Federica Brandisi, uh, working in plant biology and PRL with a $1.96 million award, studying on uh, unfolded protein responses in Arabidopsis thaliana. <coughs> Oops. Um, so Sarah Evans has a very strong, strong program centered at KBS and she studies microbes and memory and moisture um, and studying how they interplay and in, in how microbes uh, can transmit uh, species across different uh, ecosystems. Um, so that's a $1.4 million award. <coughs> Uh, Eva Fare from Plant Biology has a $1.2 million uh, award, uh, which, which is a collaborative award on circadian regulation in wild and domesticated potatoes. Betty Phillips uh, is the next awardee. She has a $1.9 million award uh, related to her work around middle school math curriculum. Um, and she is really uh, an amazing person who's been uh, leveraging these large awards for many, many years. <clears throat> She is also one of the people that developed uh, the connected math curriculum. That is a very important source of income for education research across um, the, the college and the university. Uh, Dohan Pion has a $3.2 million award from the NIH R01 on T cell responses and immunotherapies to treat head and neck cancer. <clears throat> um, Sean Wei has a, uh, an award from the NSF um, on interactions between Tonga Lao subduction system and the Samoan plume. Um, so that's a very interesting and uh, strong program in, in earth and environmental sciences. One of the biggest events that happened this year um, is the renewal award for the plant research laboratory. Um, and that's been running for many, many years. And uh, Christoph Benning, uh, has done a fantastic job of reinvigorating that program. Um, and so they, they were awarded at a higher rate than before, despite the very tough times. So congratulations to, to Christoph and everybody in the plant research laboratory. There was one equipment award that we should note, which is uh, a mass spectrometry and met metabolomics instrument. And it was, uh, it was awarded to Dan Jones, who's director of the RTSF mass spectrometry and metabolomics core. <coughs> So um, that, that's the uh, list of great things that have been going on in the college. Um, now I'd like to go into a few things about strategic planning and, and the thinking at the current time. Um, so as you know, most units have completed their, um, their plans. Uh, we, have five, we had five working groups, mission, vision, values, diversity, equity, inclusion, undergrad ed, research, and grad ed. Those reports were taken um, by a, a integration working group, which is uh, consists of 15 people. That group has been working very hard for a long time, meeting um, bi-weekly. Um, and out of that has come a two-page flyer. And this has been circulated a lot, so a lot of people have seen it, including people outside of our uh, college. And it's getting close to final form. A second document, which is uh, 10 to 12 pages, we're calling it an executive summary. That's nearing completion. We're hoping to have that close to finalized before uh, the Christmas break. And these two things are aspirational with a list of things we want to do. Then we have to get to the point of implementation. And without an implementation document, the first two documents will be very nice, but they won't really have things that we will actually carry out in detail. And so the implementation document is very important and we'll be developing that in early 2021. 
Um, what are our focus areas? Well, we've been talking for many, um, a couple of years about diversity, equity, and inclusion. There's so much to do, um, and we need to get a, a DEI leader. The advertisement for uh, someone at the assistant or associate dean level in the college uh, to serve as that DEI leader, the advertisement is now um, being posted. Um, a, a, a very good thing is that many units have their own DEI committees now, and we have a college DEI committee. There are a lot of things going on, a lot of successes. Um, trainings we need to resume, and we will resume them as soon as we can. And there's a lot of other things that we're planning as part of the strategic planning process. We have to emphasize student success. This is really important for our future. Um, if we don't do re really well at student success, we'll start losing our enrollment. Um, and one way to try to stay up with best practice is to support evidence-based practice. We have very strong education research on campus, particularly in that side. And one of the aspects of it is we want to develop evidence-based practice, uh, which is inclusive and uh, encourages diverse students. Uh, we are and would like to work toward a university level uh, undergrad learning assistant program. Uh, uh, there are a lot of undergrad learning assistants in uh, the college and we want to take what we've learned and, and uh, see, see if some of that can be done at the university level. We still will need to do trainings at um, individual unit levels as we do for grad students. We have new data science bachelor's and master's programs and we're very excited to see them uh, evolve. Uh, several units are working on master's revenue-based initiative programs, and that's one way we can try to offset the challenges of reducing budgets. So what other focus areas have we talked about? Well, one we've talked about a lot is that we really need to prepare our students for varied careers. Um, and, you know, we want to do the things we currently do, which is prepare them for academic careers. Um, we also want to prepare them for the private sector and entrepreneurial training uh, and so to do that, we want to make it a very rich environment in which they can uh, engage with alumni that have been successful in the private and entrepreneurial sectors. And there are lots of other aspects to this. There's many more uh, directions than these two. There's six or seven directions we could think about for student career preparation. And it's, a, it's an area we, we need to work on. Uh, honorifics, if we look at the current number of uh, prestigious and highly prestigious awards that are uh, given to faculty, uh, pre predominantly external awards and membership of societies, we're, we're lagging our peers. And um, there are many people in our college that deserve these awards and, uh, and, and uh, they'd be very competitive for them. And so we wanna figure out how we can make this um, easier to do and, and help people who are willing to nominate and people that are willing to self-nominate get through the process and, and get nominated for these awards. So, the provost is pushing this hard. Uh, there is now Corey Washington and a group in the VPRI's office who's supposed to be helping with this. Um, and so we'll try to work with them when we can and we'll try to do our own thing when we can. And Angela Wilson is, is taking the lead on that. <laughs> One of the big problems we have is uh, decaying infrastructure. And our first step toward this is to get an inventory of what the problems are. And of course that's a long list, but uh, we have to have it, we have to prioritize it, and we have to start pushing hard to fix it. <clears throat> so uh, I've um, talked a lot, I've publicized this to the upper administration, and that is uh, we have several uh, interdisciplinary research areas. We're actually top five in the country, and we should, make, uh, we should leverage that more. By doing that and publicizing that, we can also uh, get more recognition for our core programs, which are also very strong, and so in the plant sciences, um, we are very highly ranked um, and a and &R and, e uh, and engineering both profit from the fact that NATSI has a very strong plant sciences program. And we profit from very strong collaborations, particularly with a &R, but it's particularly with AgBio, which is a very large organization. I learned yesterday that the funding of AgBio is at around 122, 120 million a year. And so it's a very large operation with a lot of resources. Quite a bit of it is very practically oriented, but there's a lot of it that's basic science and profits from collaboration with NatSci. So that's an area where we can think of working with AgBio to, uh, to further expand resources in the plant sciences area. 
Uh, nuclear sciences, of course, we know very well um, is FRIB. FRIB now has a new mandate from the Department of Energy that it needs to engage more uh, with a broader community of research areas. And there are several areas that, um, that uh, Thomas Glashmarker and I have talked about maybe being areas that we could think about uh, pursuing. And Thomas is obviously the leader in this, but we can, we can participate where we can. Um, one is the use of new isotopes as traces, and that can be in medicine or in plants or in other environments, uh, environmental uh, environments. Then there's uh, a very uh, classic old problem about radiation effects in materials and devices, for example, in computing and other electronic devices. And uh, then there's a question of uh, radiation effects in living systems. These areas are becoming more prominent with the uh, plans to go into space, um, the moon mission, uh, moon, <coughs> and also the, the mission to Mars. An area where for the first time NatSci um, and, and, and Michigan State University was listed as being um, in the top five nationally is in environmental sciences and engineering. And there's a lot going on across campus, but a, a large fraction of it is occurring within NatSci in earth and environmental sciences, in EEB, in plant biology. There's a lot going, in, uh, going on in A&R, uh, engineering, and in social science. And there's a particular interest in understanding climate change and mitigating its effects, but there's lots of other aspects to that. Um, the, uh, another area where the university is very highly ranked is veterinary sciences. Um, and there's opportunities there for us. Um, we'd like to build up strength somehow in, in not only veterinary and sciences, but also sciences related to human health. And there's a concept called One Health that uh, Victor Reed has kind of informed me on, which is the concept that you can think about using animal models, both small and large, and diseases that are common to humans and animals as one kind of system. And then you can translate from basic science to animals to humans and maybe improve human health. And that's one part of the One Health concept. And it's a place where Michigan State can really compete, I believe. Um, there are other potential top five areas, ecology, evolution, and behavior I mentioned before. Education research is already very highly ranked, but um, we don't get the recognition that, that uh, this should get. An area we're expanding in is computational sciences, data science modeling, uncertainty quantification, actuarial sciences, which is something not many people understand or know much about, but it's a really important area for all of us as it underlies um, all of our insurance policies. Um, and there's a very large effort in the Lansing area, a lot of uh, companies that work in that area. And so there's a, there's a strong industrial potential there. And then what people call convergent research, which is really taking quantitative methods, modeling and data science, and trying to build connections to the applied world, such as plant sciences or human health, uh, physics, um, chemistry. And uh, we have an opportunity to push this through CMSE, which is doing a great job of building bridges between computational modeling and application. Finally, because I'm a physicist, I had to mention astrophysics. Um, we have a lot of strength um, with a telescope in Chile. We have the Nuclear Astrophysics Center, and we have a, a neutrino um, <clears throat> observatory. Um, a neutrino observatory at, at the South Pole. And so um, all of these areas are, are on the verge and there, there are more we can think about. And there is also our core programs, which are doing very well. So there's a lot of opportunities for areas to work in. And um, I forgot to mention that Jim McCaska also received a Royal Chemistry Society Award this year. Congrats to him uh, for this well-deserved award, uh, as well as to all of the others that uh, received awards during the past year. So with that, that's the end of the update from the college. And if there are any questions, I'd be happy to attempt to answer them. If Kari has any questions, if Kari is there. I am here. There has been no questions so far. Um, you can use the question and answer button at the bottom of the screen if you do have some questions for Phil.
It's a QA. One one person had another. Oh, Megan Donahue asked, uh, what is that music? <laughs> that that music was uh, gypsy jazz and, and the tune was minor swing and it was made famous by Django Reinhardt um, back in the 50s. Okay, so hearing no questions, let's go on to the awards. <clears throat> So um, the process for these awards uh, is mostly based on, um, traditionally has been based on the NATSI Faculty Advisory Committee that looks at uh, the award packages that come in and, and decides on who, who the leading candidates are each year. The Center, Center for Integrative Studies in General Science has their own process, which is run separately. Um, so the first award we want to hand out is the NatSci Outstanding Faculty Award. And these awards go primarily to senior faculty members in recognition of outstanding contributions in scholarly research and teaching to the college and to the university. And the award winners of this award this year, are first of all, Michael Feig. I guess I shouldn't do that every time. <laughs> uh, next is uh, oh, Michael Feig from Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. The second award winner is um, Thomas Hammond from Chemistry. Uh, the third is Ji Yong Ji from Microbiology and Molecular Genetics. And the fourth um, is Elise Zipkin from Integrative Biology. And I'm not sure she considers herself a senior faculty member yet. Well, maybe several of those don't consider themselves senior faculty yet. So congratulations to all of them. And now it's time for applause. Well done. Um, the next award is the um, Teacher Scholar Award. And this is for relatively junior faculty for outstanding contributions to teaching and scholarly research. And for this award, both need to be uh, strong and innovative. Uh, the first winner is June Kitagawa from Mathematics. And the second winner is also from Mathematics, Willie Wong. Um, and congratulations to them and congratulations to Mathematics. So let's see. Um, The next uh, awards are the NATSI Undergraduate Teaching Award. These awards go to faculty members who have demonstrated outstanding contributions to and continuing involvement in creative and engaging ways to foster student learning and instruction. And uh, the first award goes to Tammy Long from Plant Biology. Congratulations, Tammy. And the second award goes to Zin Marie Posey from the Department of Chemistry. Congratulations, Tammy and Lynn Marie. <clears throat> and uh, let's see, clap, clap track one more time. <laughs> uh, so there's another teaching award that uh, we started awarding last year. This is actually a pretty lucrative award. It's for um, teaching faculty of any rank, fixed term or tenure, Recipients are selected by the College of Natural Science Award Committee with student input. The Fritz Award was established to honor and encourage individuals who have exhibited excellence in teaching in the College of Natural Science, especially in physics and mathematics. And the winners this year, first winner is Catherine Hunt from Chemistry. And uh, she qualifies because she is a theoretical chemist. So it's kind of mathematical. Um, and the second winner is Saul Becerra Novo from the Physics and Astronomy Department. And Saul does a lot of great things for the college and congratulations to them both uh, for, the, for winning this prestigious award. The next award is uh, a Junior Faculty Mentoring Award. Um, and it is as it states, uh, for mentoring junior faculty members throughout their academic career. And the winner of that mentoring award this year is Hongbing Wang from the Physiology and Neuro uh, Department and the Neuroscience Program. C 
congratulations, uh, Hongbin. The Natsai Postdoctoral Mentoring Award. Uh, this award goes to faculty members who have made outstanding contributions to the effective mentoring of postdoctoral researchers in both professional development and holistic balance. And the winner of this award is Robin Buell from the Plant Biology Department. <clears throat> The next award is the Natsai Distinguished Academic Staff Award. This award goes to academic staff members for outstanding contributions to improving the success of students in the college. <clears throat> and the winner this year is Dan Holmes from the chemistry department. And he runs the NMR facility and is, is there uh, all hours of the day and night. Uh, the next prize is the Undergraduate Academic Advisor Award. This award goes to faculty members or academic staff for their outstanding service as advisors. It is awarded by the Natsai Student Advisory Council. And the winner this year is Laurie Thorpe, uh, and she is in the residential initiative on the study of the environment, does a fantastic job there. Congratulations, Laurie. The Graduate Academic Advisor Award, this award goes to faculty members or academic staff for their outstanding commitment and dedication to student success. It is awarded by the Natsai Student Advisory Council. <clears throat> and the winner this year is David Arnasti from the Biochemistry and Molecular Biology Department. And David is a very passionate proponent of, of student success. Congratulations, David. Uh, now the Natsai Support Staff Award, and these awards go to staff members who have exceptional job performance and contributions that have improved the university's ability to fulfill its missions. And without support staff, we can do very little. It's great to acknowledge um, support staff, and this year's winner is Elizabeth McCall from, uh, from Chemistry. <clears throat> and the second winner of the Natsai Support Staff Award is Sandra O'Reilly from the Physiology Department. Congratulations and thank you very much for your help. <clears throat> oh yeah, <laughs> we should do some more clapping. Uh, yeah, so. Um, Next are uh, uh, Natsai Excellence in Teaching Citations. These awards go to graduate uh, teaching assistants who have distinguished themselves in undergraduate classroom teaching. And the first winner of this award is Zain El Zahid from the Physiology Department. Congratulations, Zain, and thank you for your, for your contributions. The second winner is Darren Inkovaya from Integrated Biology, and also the uh, the EVE program. Thank you very much for your hard work and, and, and it's really great to recognize you. And uh, maybe it's time for another clap. <laughs> um, the next awards are for undergraduate learning assistance. And this award is given in recognition of the care given and the skills shown in meeting classroom responsibilities in the College of Natural Science. Undergraduate learning assistance are becoming more and more important for us and it's great to recognize your work. The first winner is uh, Brandon Lawler uh, from Mathematics. Thank you, Brandon, and congratulations. Uh, and the second one is Jacob Starkey from the Chemistry Department. And again, thank you very much for your hard work. Um, and so, yeah, we, we do one more, one more clap there, yeah. Congratulations, Jacob. Um, so we're getting toward the end of this, uh, list. It, it goes a lot faster online. <clears throat> the next four awards are given by the College of Center for Integrative Studies in General Science, um, and they are all endowed awards. And the first one is the Lorena Blinn um, Endowed Teaching Award, and that goes to Stephen Thomas, um, and he's in the Center for Integrative Studies, but he also does a lot of work in the college and across campus and has been so helpful in trying to help us and the college improve its online teaching in, uh, in, in, in the spring and in the fall and will continue into the next spring. So thank you, Stephen, we really appreciate your work. <clears throat> um, the second one is the James D. Heshley Endowed Teaching Award. And uh, if you don't know Jim Heshley, he, he uh, participated in some of the innovations around cisplatin and carboplatin, and he's a long time 
visitor to Michigan State. Um, and so it's great to see him endowing this teaching award. The winner is uh, Laura Markham from the Center for Integrative Studies. Thank you, Laura. Um, it's great to see you recognized. <clears throat> The third award is the Ronald W. Wilson Endowed Teaching Award. This award goes to faculty or staff member for outstanding contributions to teaching and scholarship in integrative studies. And the winner is Amanda Lorenz from the Entomology Department. Uh, congratulations, Amanda. And the last award is the Harlow Mervyn Mork Memorial Excellence in Teaching Award. And this award is given to teaching assistants in recognition of outstanding contributions to the improvement of undergraduate education in integrative studies. And the winner this year is Max Helmberger, also from the entomology department. Congratulations to all of the winners from CISDS. And to all of the winners, of all of the awards that we just went through. Congratulations, thank you very much for your hard work. And in closing, I'd like to say that um, the College of Natural Science has really stepped up to get us through uh, all of the hard things we've had to face uh, during this COVID era. And as you all know, uh, we need you even more um, through the end of this semester and through the early days of spring. Um, the budget situation is, is, is not that easy. Um, uh, for the next couple of years, we can see more cuts on the horizon, and we have to think strategically around how we can make sure we keep our performance strong in the face of, of further challenges, both in terms of teaching and in terms of budget. Um, but we'll do everything we can to, to reduce the impact on students, that's absolutely critical, um, reduce the impact on uh, research, and also make sure that all members of our community uh, are supported so that uh, underrepresented and people from disadvantaged backgrounds don't get hit preferentially, which often happens in situations like this. So thank you very much for coming here today. And to close the meeting, I think it's appropriate to have something rousing. So we are the champions. Thank you everybody. And I hope you have a fantastic Thanksgiving. <laughs>